Thank you, Jane. Thanks, Mr. Commissioner. A few years ago, I was sitting with Steve Stone, the broadcaster for the Chicago White Sox, at an Arizona Fall League game, and this guy comes up and says, Steve, can I have your autograph? He, sure, he says, sure. He signs it. And he says, hey, you don't want Bobby's autograph? And the guy just stared at me. And he said, yeah, I know you. You're that guy from Atlanta that gets thrown out all the time, right? I said, yeah, that's me, but Lasorda, if he hadn't quit so early in his career, he would have had the record that I've got now. I can honestly say that I got along really well with the men in blue, and I have all the respect in the world for them. I'm truly humbled to stand here before you in Cooperstown with two men that pitched for me and two managers that made my life as a manager so challenging, and a hitter that we never did figure out how to pitch to him. To Tom Glavin, Greg Maddox, and I have to mention the third member of the big three, John Smoltz, I can honestly say I would not be standing here today if it weren't for you guys. Together, these guys earned six Cy Young Awards while wearing a Braves uniform. I would be remiss if I didn't tell a Glavin and a Maddox story, and it won't take very long. They've heard them before, but only not too long ago, okay? So anyway, since I've been voted into the Hall of Fame, I've gotten a lot of compliments on what a smart manager I am, or was, and uh, not so smart all the time. Tommy Glavin's pitching this game, and as usual, it's tight and late. And I'm looking at the situation. Runners on second and third, two outs. At least, that's what I'm seeing. I go out to the mound. I said, hey, Tommy. Chipper comes in, the other infillers. I said, what do you think? Why don't we just walk this guy instead of pitching around, pitching around him? He said, Skip, that's one of the better ideas you've had in the last month. But where are we going to put him? So I looked at third, looked at second. There's runners there. And I glance over at first. Happens to be a runner there, too. <laughs> so I said, look, if this gets out to the press tomorrow, each one of you are going to be fined $1,000. <laughs> Greg Maddox was the only pitcher that made me nervous when he started a ball game. Before the game started, he would always come to where I was sitting just below the dugout and give me this list of uh, situations that might come up during the course of a ball game, and I had to remember all these things. So we're late in the game, and I'm thinking to myself, this is one of those situations that Greg uh, wanted me to, uh, to help him out with. And uh, he, uh, uh, so I tell, <laughs> anyway, there's runners at, at second and third, two outs and a base open, and I remember that darn situation. So I tell Leo, Leo Mazzoni, I'm going to go out and check on Maddox. I get out to the mound and I say, Mad Dog, is this the guy you want two pitches to and then walk him? He said, yeah, don't you remember, Bobby? And I said, yeah. I said, what are you trying to do, Mad Dog? He says, I'm trying to pop him up to Chipper Jones at third base on the second pitch. And you know what? He did just that. <laughs> so anyway, I was lucky in my career working for great baseball people. To John Sherholtz, my general manager and now president of the Braves, who gave us the players to win 14 straight divisional titles. I can only say, hope to see you here soon, John. Because of free agency and monetary restraints on some clubs, it's difficult for players to stay with one organization his entire career. But Chipper Jones did that. Chipper, you'll be standing here soon. And thank you for everything you've done for the Braves organization. And thanks to all the players, coaches, scouts, trainers, clubbies, and front office personnel that passed through Atlanta and helped make the Braves organization what it is today. Thanks to Bill Lucas, Ted Turner, Bill Bartholome, Terry McGurk, Stan Kasten, and Paul Snyder. Thank you for believing in me when they hired me, even though I had no major league experience. I also owe a debt of thanks to Pat Gillick and Paul Beeston, who I work for in Toronto. When you talk about enjoying your job and having fun too, 
These two guys were the very best. I also want to thank all our family, friends, Braves fans that made the journey here today, and to the fans back, back in Atlanta at Turner Field who are watching this on the big screen. Thanks for sticking with us all these years. I had an awesome dad, mom, and my sister, Joy. My father had five brothers and six sisters who loved the game of baseball. In fact, they formed the first Little League and Babe Ruth Leagues in my hometown of Selma, California. And that place is on the map because Tom Seaver lived 10 miles up the road from me. My father made my first pair of spikes out of an old pair of shoes. I know they are watching from above today, and I will say this. If there is a game going on at the same time as this ceremony, I will guarantee you that my father is switching the TV back and forth and second-guessing both managers. <laughs> I always dreamed of being a ball player. I had elbow surgery and missed my senior year of baseball. I was sitting at home thinking about a couple of scholarships that I still had left when there was a knock on the door. I opened the door and I didn't recognize the guy. He said, I'm Red Adams and I'm a scout for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And somebody around this city, he said, somebody told me that you just might make a ball player. Well, Red took me to Los Angeles to work out and things were going really good. He pulled me aside one day and he said, look, Al Campanis, our scouting director, is coming to the workout tomorrow and he's going to stand behind the cage and give the signals what to throw to you. He said, now look, when I wind up and you see no white, it's a fastball. And if you see white when I wind up, it's a breaking ball. I said, good. So. Uh, we start uh, the batting practice. I see white. It's a breaking ball. Boom, line drive over the fence. I see no white. It's a fastball. Line drives. This goes on for about five minutes. And Al said, OK, boy, shower up and meet me in my office. Well, anyway, I signed a nice contract that day, and my dream came true. I'm playing for the New York Yankees eight years later. And I get this letter in the mail with Dodger stationery on it. I opened it, and there was a check inside with a note that said, enclosed, please find check for $2,500 as an incentive bonus for reaching the major leagues. And P.S., I know what you and Red were up to that day at that workout. Sincerely, Al Campanis. <laughs> Two of my favorite people in baseball were Ralph Houck and Lee McPhail. If not for them, I would never have managed a professional baseball game. They gave me the opportunity to uh, become a manager. And this has been really a great ride for all these seasons, everyone with a changing cast of characters and everyone full of memories. I'll never forget the 91 season. And not too long after that, in 95, when we went to the World Series and got all of the way uh, uh, past Cleveland in that series, but the first one in 91 was so special also. In closing, I want to salute Hall of Fame President Jeff Idelson, one of the nicest men are out of baseball, and his entire staff here in Cooperstown, and also our host at historic Otisaga Hotel. It belongs in a Hall of Fame all by itself. And last but certainly not least, my wonderful wife Pam and our children for their unwavering support even though I spent half the year on the road and the other half at the ballpark, virtually between Valentine's Day and to the end of the World Series. I would like to uh, introduce my wife, Pam, if they would uh, camera on them, and my two sons, Randy and Bobby Jr., my beautiful daughters, Debbie, Connie, Shelly, Skyla, and Keisha and Kami, who are watching at home. I love you all, and thanks for holding down the fort together, guys. In my wildest dreams did I ever think this could happen, but I'm sure glad it did. Thank you.